The history. Towards the latter part of the 17th century, the Dominican provincial chapter placed the parish of Calasau, derived from Calasan, which means a place of lightnings, under the patronage of St. Paul. However, from 1621 onwards, it became the parish of Saints Peter and Paul, presumably because a newer and bigger church was erected by Father Juan Maldonado de San Pedro Martin, who was the town's first parish priest. In 1763, when the local rebel hero, Palaris, took up arms against the government, the church was put to the torch. The alcalde mayor and other Spaniard besieged by the rebels of Binalatong, later called San Carlos, took refuge in the brick tower as the church and convent were burning. The religious, the Dominicans present inside the convent, saved themselves by escaping with the help of the insurgents respected them. Ten years after this episode, in 1773, Bishop Miguel Garcia de Nueva Segovia chose the town of Calasau as the site of the Cesan Synod in compliance with ruling of the Provincial Council of Manila 1771, which had provided its acts that the Cesan Bishop should hold the Cesan Synod to better implement church decreases. According to records, Calasau was selected because it was certainly located as well as to indicate that the church and the convent at the time had already risen from the ruins. Later, in 1804, a new church of three names measuring 89 vara or yards in length, 22 in width, and 19 in height, with two rows of windows, was built. It has also a bell tower older than the church itself. But unfortunately, in 1841 or 1842, this church was leveled to the ground once again. The church was rebuilt a little later by Father Ramon del Mau with the cooperation of his passioners. But before the church was fully completed, it was burned one more in 1852. Father Ramon Suarez rebuilt the church between 1853 and 1858, when the last Dominican vicar, Father Bonifacio Provenza, left Calasau in 1898. The Church of Saints Peter and Paul were reputed to be the richest church in ornaments in the entire province of Pangasinan. During the American era, secular priests had taken over as administrator of the parish. The church was renovated when it hosted the Christ the King event in 1936 and 1945. The cathedral and the archbishop's palace from Lingayen temporarily transferred to Kalashau because the one in Lingayen then had been destroyed during the war. Thus, for three years, Kalashau had this singular privilege people consider miraculous the fact that during the liberation, three bombs were thrown in the direction of the church and convents, but these bombs failed to explode the saving boat structures. After the Second World War, Father Juan Belobicom Paris Priest, followed by Fathers Benigno Serafica Jose Ferrer, Monsignor Oscar Aquino, Bishop Jose Cabrera, uh, Monsignor Luis Ongson Abel, assisted by Father Romuel Fabregas and the uh, Paris Priest, Father Jose Carino and Alin O. Romero, and assistant, Paris Priest and Reverend Father Douglas Nicolas, and an entrant. An interview with Monsignor Luis B. Ongson. He pointed out that the hole on the second floor of the convent through which the flock victims in the 17th and 18th centuries were blessed. This was done so that the priests would not be directly exposed to the virus. The hole since the then was sealed but the outline is still visible Another interesting anecdote they share is that the church large wooden table on the second floor were used as setting for the movie Mga Kwentong ni Lola Basyang, The Sleeping Beauty episode. Any visitors who goes up to the churches leading to the second floor of the convent cannot fail to notice the oil painting of Father Luis Gandolo. In a prayerful mood, 
records reveal that the father Gandolo, when he assigned in Pangasinan, worked in Calasio and became vicar of Banalatungan or San Carlos in the early 17th century. His apostolic seal was exemplary, visiting men and women in the remotest area just to be able to attend to their spiritual needs. He was also known to be a mystic, conversing intimately with God in his saint in the conversion of soul. In fact, Padre Gandolo has been instrumental in softening an initial resistance of the native of Pangasinan to evangelization that his presence and influence continue to hold way in an understanding. Largely conservative parishioners have proven quite supportive of the parish concerns with dominantly young populations. Kalashau's parish has taken steps to ensure the youth involvement. The Catholic Youth Movement, which was introduced by Monsignor Luis B. Ungsan in Pangasinan, is very active among its activities. Are there regular seminars held in the parish to awaken the youth's role and relationship with themselves, with their families and friends, and with community, the choir, the catechetical work, the social apostolate, indeed, the parish can count on its young blood to sustain the renewal of faith among the parishioners. The church suffered from the earthquake of July 16, 1990. It is built for was totally destroyed, so that the new one exactly like the original was constructed. All the antique statue has been cleaned and restored as well as the ceiling original eye-catching floral motif thanks to the prayer and devotion of the kneeling Monsignor Louis B. Ungson, the architect, the rebuilder, the original, the antiquity of the church was restored. Monsignor Louis B. Ongson traveling miles from Canada, crisscrossing the United States, the church acquires a fully automatic bells or chimes which could be heard within 7 to 8 Kilometer radius if there are no atmospheric disturbances. Donated by the Generous Society, the high tech bells ring in Angelus three times a day and other various hymns as well as ca Christmas carols. The antique bells are preserved inside a small tower. During the stewardship of Reverend Father Fidelis B. Layog and Reverend Father John Palinar were sent to the parish of St. Peter and Paul to move forward slowly but surely to forge a legacy and making the impossible dream of the parishioners of Kalashau to come true, which the other parish priests that have come and gone dare not to do because of the huge amount of money involved in the general repair and renovation of the aging, antiquated church convent. True to the expectations of the people and with divine guidance, armed with prayers and strong determination, they ventured into the multi-million peso project for of the general renovation of the convent. After a couple of months of fundraising from the kind and generous of hearts and the overwhelming support and donation from people of all walks of life from afar and near, the project is now nearing completion. Complete with an adoration chapel and life-size monuments of Christ's apostles and Filipino saints which were constructed and built atop the gates within the front perimeter of the church. Holy Name Society and the Knights of Columbus Chamber is nearing comple completion and at the back of the church, a new Pasho del Pueblo has been constructed. Very recently, the celebration of Christ the King was held in the Church of Saints Peter and Paul, overwhelmingly successful. And that is the history of Saints Peter and Paul Parish Church in Kalashau, Pangasinan.